Welcome to News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for January 13, 2021. It seems Walt Disney World could host a vaccine distribution site, according to Gabrielle Rusin, in an update to her story with the Orlando Sentinel. Rusin says that Walt Disney World has offered to help the vaccine efforts in any way it can and is in talks with the state. Disney said it is focused on being a good community partner to help with the pandemic. State Emergency Director Jared Moskowitz confirmed during a virtual town hall uh, with Representative, Representative Anna Eskamani that Walt Disney World has the capacity to store the vaccine with an ultra-cold freezer. Quote, we have no ultra-cold freezer storage problems here in the state, Moskowitz said. There are plenty of hospitals with them. County health departments have them. Some universities have them. Disney World has one. Moskowitz's department has also brought additional ultra-cold freezers. Governor Ron DeSantis said vaccines could be dropped at Walt Disney World and Orange County schools. Quote, they can knock that out pretty quickly and it's one dose and done. So I think that makes more sense with essential workers. Moskowitz also spoke about the state not getting enough vaccine doses and the logistical challenges emergency officials face. Quote, now I'm building infrastructure and now we're not going to be able to feed the infrastructure because we're not getting enough vaccine, he said. Walt Disney World has been hosting a COVID-19 testing site for several months, so vaccine distribution would be the logical next step. Kevin Rafferty, the Walt Disney Imagineer behind Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Hollywood Studios at Walt Disney World and Cars Land at Disney California Adventure and many, many more incredible projects like Mickey's Philhar Magic and uh, my personal favorite, the Pan Galactic, Pizza, Pan Galactic Pizza Port in Tokyo Disneyland, has officially announced his retirement. Rafferty had initially expressed the intent to retire shortly after the opening of Runaway Railway as his final project. However, the week later, the pandemic struck and changed the theme park world as we know it. During the extended closure, Rafferty and his team at WDI teamed up with the Muppets to pen and perform the original song, Brave Little Spark. Walt Disney Imagineering shared his official retirement announcement via Instagram, featuring the following caption, quote, After 42 years of creating magical guest experiences as an Imagineer, executive creator Kevin Rafferty shared his plans to retire April 1st, 2021. From his days as a dishwasher at Disneyland all the way through his... Uh, work on show writing and creative direction of Cars Land, Toy Story Midway Mania, The Twilight Zone, Tower of Terror, Mickey, Minnie's Runaway Railway, and more. Kevin's zany personality and humor have inspired generations of Disney Imagineers and guests from around the world. We can't thank Kevin enough for all his contributions at Imagineering and wish him all the best in his next adventure. As mentioned in the caption, Rafferty started out his career as a dishwasher at the Plaza Inn at Disneyland before applying for an entry-level position at Walt Disney Imagineering, which was then Wed Enterprises in 1978, during the massive recruitment period for Epcot Center. Rafferty also pitched the never-built Roger Rabbit's Hollywood Land for Hollywood Studios, which included Baby Herman's runaway Baby Buggy Ride. In September of 2019, Rafferty sat down with our very own Nathan Hartman to talk about his latest autobiography, Magic Journey, My Fantastical Walt Disney Imagineering Career, in an episode of our show Dream Finders. I highly recommend checking that out. Um, those of you who have been longtime fans of WWNT know um, we've interviewed Kevin several times before that. I interviewed him uh, for Cars Land. I interviewed him for several projects. And every time I would say, um, talking with my favorite Imagineer, that was not, uh, I'm dropping this, uh, that was not just something I said. Um, I have a lot of respect for Kevin. I think he's a fantastic show writer, and I think he did. Um, he contributed some of my absolute favorite things, which growing up in the 90s, uh, as a kid in that time, uh, are part of the reason why I'm sitting here now, whether it was Tower of Terror or um, whatever it may have been. And in later years, things like Mickey's Fill Her Magic, uh, et cetera. Uh, obviously, Cars Land, my favorite theme land in any park in the world, which I think uh, he just did the most amazing job with. Um, Kevin, we wish you the best in your retirement, and, and we can't even begin to thank you uh, for everything you've contributed to our lives uh, over all these years. Dwan Rivers' journey as vice president of Disney's Animal Kingdom has come to an end as he announced his retirement as well. The news broke from a fellow recent retiree, Imagineer Joe Rohde, on his Instagram account, praising Rivers as a people person, warm, outgoing, plain-spoken, and ready to laugh. Rivers became the vice president of Animal Kingdom back in 2014, overseeing projects including Pandora, the world of Avatar, and the addition of nighttime offerings to make it truly a full-day park. This is the culmination of an over 30-year tenure with Disney, where he has served in such capacities as General Manager of Wilderness Lodge, the Vice President of Downtown Disney, now Disney Springs, the Vice President of New Business Development in Disney Parks and Resorts, uh, Vice President of Alani, Disney's resort in Hawaii, and the Vice President for Hotels and Business Solutions at Disneyland Paris. 
Walt Disney World, the monorail system has seen a number of changes since the reopening of the parks and resorts back in July. Starting out with the vinyl dividers in between the cabins, which had to be modified due to a fire hazard. And now the addition of plastic dividers to form smaller, isolated sections for guests to sit in. As we've seen on various attractions where they've been installed, these dividers are meant to increase capacity and reduce wait times. When loading, we notice uh, double the amount of numbered queue markers in the loading area. Cabins are divided into four sections, each capable of sitting about two adults. We were seated with two other parties in the cabin, a party of two and a party of four. The party of two took up one cubicle and the party of four took up two cubicles. The sections are made of hard plastic material retrofitted to the existing handrails and seats using numerous zip ties. Here's what it looked like from within our section. While the dividers are a visually drastic change, we appreciate the font used for the numbered section stickers matching the signage elsewhere for the monorail. For now, we've only noticed these dividers on the express monorail line with monorail green and black, each halfway outfitted with these new socially distanced sections. Hear ye, hear ye, the Liberty Square Market has closed for a multi-week refurbishment at the Magic Kingdom, but turkey leg lovers don't need to be in despair. Uh, the location, known primarily for serving snacks, has been covered with a gray scrim beneath its canopy. The scrim extends around the entire structure with signage notifying of the closure. Meanwhile, several of the outdoor elements have been gathered nearby, acting as a makeshift barrier. The signs are nicely themed to the colonial era as a public notice, telling guests that turkey legs are available nearby in Frontierland. The walkway on the other side remains open, allowing guests to pass under as they head towards the Hall of Presidents. Currently, the refurbishment is scheduled to run through February 1st, though that could be extended if needed, as Disney listed as expected to reopen sometime in February of 2021. Meanwhile, just across the border in Frontierland, a makeshift turkey leg cart has been set up next to the frozen treat cart. The cart offers a sparse menu of turkey legs, bottled soft drinks, and water. An A-frame sign also notifies guests of the offerings. Given that the refurbishment should only take roughly a couple of weeks, this uh, temporary cart should only be here for a brief time. We hope you have your plans for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World already set because it seems time has run out for Disney Park Pass reservations at the Magic Kingdom. Previously only fully booked for annual pass holders, the park is now booked for guests of all types on October 1st, 2021. Both theme park ticket guests and Disney Resort guests are no longer allowed to make reservations for the park that day. Of course, we're still months away from the 50th birthday, so the park passes may be replenished, but in, for the meantime, uh, things are full on the actual 50th birthday. The La Gelateria stand has now been installed in the Italy Pavilion at Epcot. The new quick service location is led by the Patina Restaurant Group and will serve delicious gelato. stand is currently behind some construction walls on the American Adventure side of the pavilion next to Joffrey's. The stone and terracotta structure matches the theming of the rest of the Italy Pavilion. With the stand now in place, landscaping is likely to be completed. It, should be, it shouldn't be much longer until La Gelateria opens, and we can't wait to eat our fill of gelato. A concrete wall connects the stand to the building next door. For the taste of the Epcot International Festival of the Arts, a butterfly photo op can be found on the wall. After apparently fixing the dead pixels on the massive harmonious barge currently in the World Showcase Lagoon at Epcot, Disney is now testing the barge's screens. Squares full of numbers and letters were appearing on the barge's screens. Different combinations could be seen on either side, with one portion uh, more illuminated. The barge's movable arm was also recently tested. It'll be one of five barges that'll make up the show, uh, which will debut later this year. Meanwhile, the second of five harmonious barges now sits in the lagoon as well. The first barge has been there for about a month, undergoing various fixes and tests, as we just talked about. And now the second barge is there, ready to go through the same type of testing. Three to go, two more in this style and one more in the middle that uh, some of us have called the Stargate, the big circle. The historic transformation of Epcot will take another step forward in February with the Soul of Jazz and American Adventure, a new exhibit debuting inside the American Adventure Pavilion. Featuring Joe Gardner from Disney and Pixar Soul, now streaming on Disney+, Plus, you're invited on a musical tour of America to learn about in the inspiring genre of music. Check out the video on our website from Walt Disney Imagineering's Carmen Smith to hear more about what's in store. Back in October, we reported that Disney's Animal Kingdom uh, Rhino Kendi had given birth to a baby boy. Kendi's pregnancy was featured on the Disney Plus National Geographic series The Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom. Since then, the baby has been learning and growing. We even caught a glimpse of him at Disney's Animal Kingdom uh, in the New Year video. This baby rhino hasn't yet joined the rest of the animals on the safari, but we do finally know his name, thanks to a video from Disney. As the Disney Parks blog explained, Ranger was named to honor the wildlife rangers who protect rhinos around the world. Rhinos are one of the most endangered animals in the wild due to poaching. 
Getting just the right photo doesn't have to be difficult. A new photo opportunity at Animal Kingdom allows guests to pose with characters from Disney and Pixar's Up. Physical distancing markers are in place to keep parties separated as they wait for this new uh, photo opportunity, and sometimes a photo fast photographer is even available. Guests are free to use their own camera as well, of course. The photo op has a foreground featuring Doug, Russell, Kevin, and Kevin's chicks. Uh, it's a pretty cute little photo op. The holiday decorations are coming down as we enter the new year. That can only mean it's time to get ready for Valentine's Day. Thankfully, Disney's Grand Floridian Resort is already celebrating with a brand new cupcake. The Valentine's Day Red Hot Cinnamon Cupcake is made with a cinnamon sponge cake filled with red hot cinnamon mousse and topped with heart-shaped vanilla buttercream and a Mickey and Minnie chocolate garnish. The cupcake sells for $5.99 and can be found at Gasparilla Island Grill. Among the many changes that COVID-19 has brought to Walt Disney World has been the suspension of buffets across property, with several reopening as family-style dining. Thankfully, the wave of American flavors at the Contemporary has found a way to bring back favorites from the breakfast buffet in a new entree, the Wave Feast. If you're like us, much of the allure of the buffet is that you have the opportunity to try lots of different things, many of which you probably wouldn't order on their own. Uh, making its debut, this menu selection aims to bring a variety of those items to a single plate. Uh, our server shared that many guests were asking about the fan favorite buffet breakfast and when it might return, so they just decided, well, let's just do this in the meantime. The platter has almost everything a diner could want from the buffet, with one major exception. You get scrambled eggs, three strips of bacon, three sausage links, an eggs benedict, a breakfast potatoes, a Mickey waffle, the amazing bacon cheddar grits, and a bowl of fruit. What is conspicuously absent, though, the sweet potato pancakes. Yeah, that's sad. Head on over to our site to read about the full experience. Disneyland Resort has volunteered to be a location for California's first super point of dispensing site. These sites are epicenters for broad COVID-19 vaccinations. As vaccines start to be distributed throughout the U.S., large open areas are needed to set up sites for vast distribution. In a recent press release, current chairman uh, Andrew Doe states the Disneyland Resort, the largest employer in the heart of Orange County, has stepped up to host the county's first POD site, undertaking a monumental task in our vaccination distribution process. The announcement was made via Twitter post by the Orange County Health Care Agency. These are set, there are said to be five of these POD sites in the region, and uh, they'll have the capacity to vaccinate thousands of residents on a daily basis. Currently, Orange County is in Group 1A of distribution, meaning residents over the age of 75 are eligible for the vaccine. The set location for the Disneyland Resort POD site is the Toy Story parking lot located south of Disneyland Park. Supervisor Donald P. Wagner of the 3rd District states, quote, It's important to vaccinate as many willing people as possible for COVID-19, and we need the space to do it. I thank Disneyland Resort and the City of Anaheim for stepping up in the shared effort to give OC residents protection against the virus. This is the first regional Super POD location to be announced by the County of Orange. Sprinkles, the gourmet cupcake shop in downtown Disney, has closed. Sprinkles had previously been closed earlier in the year and had reopened mid-September. There's no word on an opening date for the establishment. The cupcake chain had originally opened its doors in downtown Disney in November of 2016. Sprinkles offers freshly baked cookies and cupcakes and is known as the world's first cupcake bakery by Food Network. Prior to this recent closure, Sprinkles had been using an online ordering system to safely cater to downtown Disney guests. While there is no reason given for the closure, it can be attributed to the loss of foot traffic through downtown Disney with the closure of both Disneyland Resort theme parks since March. Guests visiting downtown Disney now have a quick snack option as Marceline's Confectionery opened an outdoor check stand at Disneyland Resort. This will allow guests to buy snacks and desserts from the shop without having to wait outside if the shop is at capacity. Marceline's Confectionery has many of the treats you can find inside Disneyland Park. It also occasionally offers holiday and special event treats. Marceline's is a great place to grab Disney-themed snacks and desserts, and while there is now an outdoor checkout option, guests are still free to go inside to shop. The check stand is located directly outside the main entrance, with cast members ready to help you with any questions or to purchase items. The outdoor option will give guests the opportunity to quickly get the items they're looking for if they aren't interested in going inside. This also alleviates crowds on the inside, obviously. As announced this weekend, Tokyo Disney Resort has suspended ticket sales and is restricting park capacity to 5,000 guests as Tokyo enters a state of emergency. With these restrictions, the Happy Fair with Baymax event has been postponed. The event, which will uh, feature a character meet and greet, decorations, and more, was previously set to begin this Wednesday, January 13th, that's today, and last through March 8th. Before these dates were set, it was originally supposed to happen during the summer of 2020, but COVID, of course, delayed that. There is no new date set for the event. It's possible it won't even happen until the summer of 2021. Walt Disney World annual pass holders can show off with this new pass holder exclusive Minnie Mouse ear headband. 
The ears are covered in blue, gold, and pink sequins. The headband is topped with a shimmer bow held together with a Mickey Mouse passholder charm. The large charm has Mickey shining in bright gold. Walt Disney World is embroidered on one side of the blue headband. The headband has a crisscross royal blue pattern. You can find this annual passholder ear headband in Mouse Gear at Epcot for $29.99. If you love both Valentine's Day and Halloween, then these matching Haunted Mansion couple shirts are perfect for you and your partner. These purple shirts have hitchhiking ghosts from the famous ride pointing at each other. They're available at the World of Disney at Downtown Disney District for $24.99 each. While stopping in at the World of Disney at Downtown Disney in Anaheim, we spotted a new glittery spirit jersey. It's a bright pink with the iconic Disneyland D on the front in a gold sparkle. The back of the jersey reads Disneyland Resort in the same gold glitter. You can get it for $69.99. Disneyland Resort has a new Starbucks cup inspired by Disneyland and California Avenger. On the cup, you'll find iconic images from the resort, including Sleeping Beauty Castle and the Pixar Pal Around. The cup is $24.99, is available at Trolley Treats on Buena Vista Street in California Adventure. Valentine's Day is just over a month away, and a new Minnie Mouse ear headband is a festive way to celebrate the holiday. We found this inside the Disney store, but we do expect it to be at the Disney park soon. The Valentine's Day Minnie Mouse ear headband is covered in sequins. Traditional Valentine's Day colors, red, white, and pink, make up the design. A pink bow rests between two red ears, and the ears are decorated with white sequin hearts. You can get this headband for $29.99. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to WDWNT.com. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, The Vacationeer, the engineers of your next magical vacation. Sit back and let their team of vacation planning experts craft your family's next trip. The best part, their services are free. Visit WDWNT.travel for details. The Vacation Year, the official travel agency of WDWNT. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to WDW News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying enjoy the rest of your today, and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. DreamFinders is WDW News Today's podcast all about the creative culture surrounding Disney parks. Authors, Imagineers, dancers, actors, photographers, filmmakers, and a whole lot more have all stopped by to chat about how Disney has inspired their artistic work. But I still remember sitting in yeah, conference tables and looking across at Michael and Jeffrey Katzenberg and the sort of little six-year-old inside of me going, what in heaven's name is going on here? <laughs> this is... And uh, we're off and running and Tony needs someone to lay it out for him. And there's no architect available. So the next thing I know, I'm laying out the pavilion. I, I got to tell you, I have not enjoyed a podcast so much. It's just a, just a warm conversation and a warm and intelligent conversation, which you don't find that often in podcasts. Dreamfinders. Episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher.